At TVC News, wherever the big news story is happening, we we'll get up to break it. TVC News, first with breaking news. All right, thanks for staying with us on TVC Breakfast. Ghana's president, Nana Kufuadu, has directed that the national flag be flown at half-mast in honor of former president Jer John Jerry Rawlings, who died on Thursday. The 73-year-old former president passed on at the uh, Kolebu Teaching Hospital in Accra after a week on admission. He led three coup d'etats, winning two, uh, two years. And then uh, TVC News Zona Ononye tells us more about the man, his revolution, and his dreams. And if the whole lot of us should pick on his seminar, I know we would shake up a crowd. Jerry John Rollins broke into global limelight in 1979 when, as a 32-year-old flight lieutenant of the Ghana Air Force, he was involved in a failed military coup. He was subsequently sentenced to death publicly, but not without winning civilian sympathy through his statements on the social injustice prevalent in the country at the time. Barely one month after... While waiting for the bullets, he was involved in another coup, which this time was successful. The military government, composed of mainly junior officers, handed over to an elected government after 112 days. Eight senior military officers and three former heads of state were executed. Another 300 citizens were abducted and killed, birthing a new generation of leaders in the country. Two years after, on the 31st of December 1981, Jerry Rollins and his men struck again. President Hila Lehman was ousted. For the next nine years, Jerry Rollins led a military government that struggled in many ways to better the lives of the citizens. His economic policies may appear unrealistic most of the time, but undoubtedly channeled towards making life better for the ordinary citizens. In 1992, Jerry Rollins stood for the presidential election and won with 60% of votes cast. Opposition parties alleged that government structures were already built to favor Rollins. In 1996, he was re-elected, albeit by a smaller margin. The major contender, John Kufour's Great Alliance, was an amalgamation of the country's leading opposition parties. Despite some fears of electoral violence, the poll was peaceful and had a 78% turnout. President Rollins retired from public service in 2001 at the end of his tenure. He has spent most of his post-retirement time in giving lectures on African nationalism in universities around the world. Jerry Rollins is part of the last generation of Free Africa Movement, an underground movement of military officers who wanted to unify Africa through a series of coups. He will be remembered as an uncompromising nationalist whose passion for better living for his people cannot be doubted. Ozonna Ononye, TVC News, Lagos. That's the man that we'll be talking about in the next few minutes. Uh, joining me now is the president, Ghanaian Christian Community in Nigeria, and the patron of the National Association of Ghanaians in Nigeria, James Lati. James, have you joined me right now? Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Well, let me say, accept our condolences on behalf of a lot of Nigerians. I know you would have been receiving these condolences on behalf of your country. But talk to us basically about the man, Jerry Rawlings. We all grew up loving him. At the time we were so young, we didn't know what he was all about, his policies, but he, maybe he, he, he was so handsome and we liked him growing <laughs> up, I don't know. But the point there is, what is so special? What is that special thing about Jerry Rawlings? Thank you very much. Jerry Rawlings happens to be a man who I would say is correct. Trustworthy, committed, and focused. Um, somebody said the state of Ghana be attributed to Sajifo Dr. But modern Ghana is attributed to Flight Lieutenant J.J. Royce. He was a man of the people. In other words, he knew how to gather people. He knew how to communicate with people. He knew how to fellowship with people. He came down to the level of people. And as a result of that, he was able to gather people around him. That is one factor that made him to be the people's leader. Mm -hmm. A man who is ready to go everywhere. I remember in the early days when uh, he came to power as a military uh, leader, we saw pictures of him carrying bags of cocoa with the farmers. We saw him uh, working with uh, these uh, uh, train lines, laying train lines. He was a leader. 
And I know Ghanaians and lovers of Ghana will really miss Jerry John Rawlings. But what really made him so down to earth and so lowly and simplistic? Because the point there is, he was not born on the streets or he was not, he didn't come from the very law of the society. He, he, he was born with a, partially a silver spoon, if I have to say that. Well, like I rightly said, is somebody who had the heart of the people mm. in him. I read a documentary about him where he said he had the opportunity of traveling throughout the country and he saw how people were suffering in the rural areas mm. compared to those in the urban areas. And that really touched his heart. And so he made every effort when he became the, 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 the president to touch lives. So although he was born in, let me put it in, the, in bracket, mm. in an affluent yeah. position, he, he, he loved the people. And he wanted everybody to get to a level where he or she will feel that, yes, now, beyond uh, that, that disposition of uh, being lowly, humble, simplistic, and uh, seeing life from the perspective of the masses, when it comes to his policies and when it comes to what he did in Ghana as head of state or president, as the case may be, what, what do you think was that strong thing? A lot of people said that the cleansing of of uh, people who were said to be corrupt uh, would have been one of his greatest uh, achievements, which has set the stage for a new Ghana, so to say. W would you say that's one of his greatest legacies? Well, I would say, as a Christian, I wouldn't want, would want to dive too much into it, <laughs> but I must also say that it brought a kind of fear into the people. It, it made everybody to know that you can be judged at one time or the other in your life. Why is on this planet Earth? Those who were corrupt faced it. And that brought a kind of understanding to everyone in the country that, look, if you are given an opportunity to serve the people, to work for the people, do your best. Don't amass wealth for yourself and your family. That was his message. And so that made him to, 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 to get the heart of the people onto himself. That brought a change in the country, Ghana. I remember those days you would not see Ghanaians forming a queue to enter into a vehicle. Everybody is always in a rush. But he brought discipline. That at the bus stop, let us all form a queue. Wherever you find yourself, don't be in a hurry. Take life easy. Join the queue. Add please to whatever he brought discipline into the country, and sincerely it affected. Uh, we we, all of we us. had that in Nigeria under uh, uh, the present head of state when he was uh, a military leader in the early 80s, mm. when we had the war against indiscipline. indiscipline. But after that, uh, we're back to everybody struggling for buses right now. I guess you've been seeing that in, in, in parts in, of Lagos. Very well, I've been seeing it. I've been seeing, although it looks as if. We are drifting back to it, but the discipline still remains. Mm. Those of us who knew of it yeah. could tell the younger ones, coming, please join the queue. Mm. Please at least to your, uh, to, to your statement. Mm. Be able to say thank you. I appreciate what people do to you. Now, on, on the streets of Ghana, or in, on the streets in Ghana, how, how do people talk about Jerry Rawlings? I can tell you that 70 to 80% of the people in Ghana love J.J. Rawlings. They talk well of him. They appreciate what he did. They, 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 I, I am very sure that Ghanaians would wish to have a type of Rawlings again mm. because of the characteristics he exhibited of love, of understanding, going down to the people. And so he's talked about very well everywhere you go in Ghana mm. till today. Wow. Now, the, the country has... Uh, uh, the, the, the flag will be flying at uh, half mast as a way of, uh, you know, signaling the national mourning. But when it comes to how to immortalize JJ Rawlings in Ghana, what do you think it should be? I think it should what be dimension a, should it take? Uh, it, it should be a state affair. Hmm. Everybody should be involved. Everybody should be involved. I mean, Nigeria presently, 
borders closed, but if I have the opportunity, mm. I have to be part of it. Mm. He really, he touched my life. I came into contact with him few, that's two or three times, and there was a change in my life. Mm. Till today, or till he, he, he passed on, I know if he sees me, he will say, Charlie James, <laughs> that's the way we will talk. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, I know it's going to be a national affair, mm. and uh, everybody should put his or her hand on the deck and give all his befitting burial. All right. Uh, Nigerians as well, certainly, we see him as, as one of us because of that relationship between Ghana and Nigeria where we are, we are, we are, we are senior brothers to each other, we are senior other. sisters <laughs> to each other. <laughs> you know, and that relationship has been uh, like that since uh, even pre-colonial pre era. Now, you have been in Ghana, you have been in Nigeria, when you compare the two, when it, when it comes to leadership and all of that, what does Nigeria stand to learn from the life and style of J.J. Rawlings? Thank you very much. Uh, I, I think uh, the leadership of our country, I've been here for quite a long time, so mm. I'll say the leadership of our country, Nigeria. Yeah. We need a leader who, who, will, who, who will have the hearts of the people in him a leader who will listen to the yearnings of the people, a leader who will be ready to answer the needs of the people, a leader who will be able to interact with the people, mm. a leader who will be able to sell his mind to the people. You sell your mind to the people, the people buy it and they associate with you. Mm. They go with you wherever you want to, do, to go. Rollins did that for Ghana. Mm. If Nigeria will have such a leader, Nigeria is a great country. Nigeria will become greater. Mm. If we have leaders who will have such characteristics as Rollins, our leader had. All right. Now, uh, of late, there has been a lot of outcry from Nigerians in Ghana. And in fact, with reports we got yesterday, a lot of Nigerians are asking that the government of Nigeria should come evacuate Nigerians from, from Ghana. And others have felt with, with, the, with the relationship that we have, there should be a better understanding in handling some of these issues where Ghana comes up with uh, business policies that Nigerians working there feel that uh, it, it's, it's not uh, convenient or conducive mm. for them. What do you make of that? Well, I think, uh, like you rightly said, it should be, there should be an understanding between the two countries. Our leaders, I believe, should come to the round table and then have a, a discussion. Mm. Somebody said we should, have, we, we should rather judge or rather than uh, war war. Mm. So I believe if our leaders should come together and look into all these policies and see how best it can be modified so that Ghanaians in Nigeria, Nigerians in Ghana will all benefit and then live peacefully one with another. Mm. I think it will be a very good thing for both countries. Yeah, but uh, we, we haven't heard this agitation so much in the last uh, 10 years or whatever. What, what really changed that is making this agitation heighten at this point? Well, I think it, 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 possibly, uh, it will be possibly because of the policies of the government uh, uh, present government mm. and that could be what has brought that agitation and like I rightly said there's need for the leaders to sit and look into those policies mm. again and ensure that these are policies that will help both citizens living in Ghana and in Nigeria. I've been in Nigeria for quite some time and I tell you the truth I've not had any challenge especially with the work I do and if Nigeria has not given me such challenge I believe Ghanaians or Ghana should also not give Nigerians any challenge as to what they do in Ghana. Mm -hmm. There should be free means of trading, free means of whatever they want to do so that that relationship which we came to meet will continue to be strengthened mm -hmm. so that our children will also follow we'll Benefit suit. from there. Exactly. All right. Now, uh, Ghanaian general elections are coming up very soon okay. and uh, I, I know you're really concerned with that. <laughs> oh, very much. Very <laughs> much concerned. Will be. Mm -hmm. But what, what's... What is in the mind of an average Ghanaian when it comes to the kind of president they want? I think the average Ghanaian today need a president who will meet their needs. A president like Rollins, mm. 
who will listen to their yearning. Ghanaians are looking for a president who says what he believes he will do, not a president who will give promises and will not fulfill. Ghanaians are looking up to a president who will stick to his word, he will abide by what he says, and he will, he, he, he will give everybody the opportunity to live peacefully in Ghana. Everybody does opportunity to speak his mind. That is the kind of president I believe Ghanaians are looking for mm -hmm. now. So in the next election, Ghanaians will be looking forward to uh, uh, the kind of president they want when it comes to being simple, lowly, and approachable, exactly. and all of that. But the, in the minds of those who are outside, watching Ghana from outside of Ghana, the, the current president... Uh, Akufuadu has, has very great perception when it comes to his, his body language and the way he leads the country. Well, that is uh, the way it is seen. Mm. But those within see it from another angle. Okay. Right. I was talking to somebody yesterday and I made a comment. And the president said, no, 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 that is not true. <laughs> Our president is not like that. Okay. I said, well, I'm outside the country. And so you who are you exactly. who is in knows the, uh, what exactly Where is happening. It pinches you. It pinches you. Yeah. But uh, left to me alone, uh, I think we've come to a point where we need a president who will really listen to the yearning of the people, mm. a president who makes promise mm. and fulfills it. Mm. That's one thing we'll be hearing also, that our president makes promise and he doesn't fulfill it. We want a president who will say, I will do this, and he goes ahead to do it. And he can pinpoint to it and say, this was my promise to you, and here is it. Mm. But when you make a promise to me, and you don't fulfill it, tomorrow if you come, I will believe you. Exactly. And that uh, is a situation. Uh, and that around. reduces the trust. The that, trust, uh, the confidence that yeah. people have in you. Right. You want a president <clears throat> who we can confide in, who we can say, yes, his word. He keeps to his word. Mm. He believes in what he says, and he brings it to action. Mm. Now, the, the, when it comes to the role of Ghana and Nigeria uh, in, in, in ECOWAS, uh, a lot of people see Nigeria and Ghana as the leaders one way or the other, as the forefront countries on the Africa, on the sub-regional uh, body. The, the, the point there is ECOWAS still over the years, since the 70s that it was created, has not been able to achieve the original dream, dream. that it was set to achieve. And... These countries are here year in, year out. Conventions are held, treaties are signed, different meetings. What do you think is the challenge there? I think our leaders should go more than go beyond just putting policies on paper mm. to implementation. Nigeria, Ghana, two great countries in West Africa. And if anything should happen to Nigeria or happen to Ghana, it affects yeah. the sub region. Mm. I believe. Way forward, our leaders should implement their policies so that the people within the sub-region would feel the presence of the, the, the establishment of ECOWAS. Yeah. That is what we are looking forward. That's and right. I think it will be well for all of us mm. if that is done. All right. Thank you so much, uh, James Lati Lati, for coming uh, to the studio. And we wish you well as you stay around and whatever you do. You are a brother, so... <laughs> very well, we are, we are. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for it's coming. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Right.